Stay the fuck home. Early in this pandemic, I came across a little slip of paper in my home that I'd picked up off the ground in Seattle on November 30th, 1999, during the World Trade Organization protest there. It was part of a handful of confetti that members of the anarchist Black Bloc had thrown into the air just before they went off to smash corporate businesses like Nike and Starbucks. And it said, civilization is collapsing. Let's give it a push. Coming across that piece of paper in March 2020, with so much collapsing around us, I felt a chill. Not only because it was a reminder that eco-fascist acceleration is bullshit has been a problem on the left for a long time, long before those nature is healing humans or the virus memes started circulating this spring. It left me unsettled because it reminded me of the grassroots fight against corporate globalization and how badly we lost it. I wasn't able to bring myself to take part in any of the 20th anniversary commemorations of the Seattle WTO protest because all I could think about was how we kind of won that battle. I mean, we shut down the trade meeting for a day, but we lost the war. In the ensuing 20 years, nothing had slowed down the advance of corporate globalization or the increasing concentration of wealth in the hands of the 1%. Quite the contrary. Stay the fuck home. Coronavirus is in so many ways a disease of globalization. It was spread around the globe by the jet-setting elite in places like that infamous dinner party in Westport, Connecticut. Disease and globalization have gone hand in hand for centuries now. As a descendant of European settlers on sitting now on Lenape soil, I think about the connection of disease to the settlement of North America and how the first 50 villages that were settled in New England by Europeans had all been emptied out first by disease. Stay the fuck home. It's a powerful prescription to avoid infection and a powerful critique of globalization, but it also raises many questions itself about who's lucky enough to have a home versus who is unhoused or incarcerated or a refugee. It raises questions about who's living in homes that don't feel safe because of the threat of domestic violence or other threats. It raises the questions of who's shouldering the burden of work at home, generally women. There's one little data point where in this short period that we've been in lockdown, the number of men submitting articles to academic journals has gone way up, while the number of women has gone way down. One little data point that's a window into vast inequities. Stay the fuck home. I don't know how to write a manifesto in this terrible time. But if I did, it would start with stay the fuck home and question everything.